The first balloon flight of the Kodak Balloon Festival was scheduled to fly over the opening day ceremonies of the 1988 Winter Olympics in Calgary. However, it was canceled due to high winds. 130 balloons were scheduled to fly over McMahon Stadium in celebration of the beginning of the Olympic Games. Of the 130 balloons at the festival, one may be more familiar to you than the rest. USA-1, a hot air balloon sent up from Sioux City, will be piloted by Jim Burke. Jim explains how he got the piloting job and why this particular balloon was chosen to fly in Calgary. Well, the balloon, of course, is uh, Doug Adams' balloon from that region. And uh, because of business commitments, he was called out of, uh, out of the state and, in fact, I think out of the country. And so uh, he asked me to come up and fly it. The balloon, of course, as you're already aware, was to represent the American flag at the opening ceremonies here in Calgary. Burke is a former college professor and now a professional balloonist from Defiance, Ohio. Mike Wooden, also from Ohio, is Burke's crew chief for commercial flights. Tom Lalonde is the third member of USA One's crew, and he has worked with Adams at other hot air balloon festivals. And the other one, interestingly enough, is a friend of Doug Adams who owns the balloon, who moved here from Grand Prairie. He crewed for Doug uh, to North Americans in Grand Prairie and now has moved to Calgary and is here helping us. So he's invaluable. He knows the city. And uh, Doug, Tom says to send some pins because we're out. Ohio and Iowa may be many miles apart, but to Burke, Iowa could be a second home. Championship Balloon Meister at in Unola, of course, for five uh, years, and I've flown there ever since 1973, so I know a lot of people in Iowa and in Unola area, and uh, <clears throat> again, it's kind of like home, and it's, it's great to be here with this aircraft. For Buena Vista College, this is Chuck Grothaus reporting from Calgary. posterity, realization, uh, satisfaction, stimulation, victory, wealth. Those were all terms that the, th the Thoris mentioned as uh, things that reasons uh, to be successful. And I'd guess, as I mentioned earlier, that uh, uh, success is important to you and is important to your son and daughter, and that's uh, part of the reason why they're here today. And we hope that uh, this day is not only successful for them, but we hope that the whole process of choosing that right college and, and getting the scholarship that's best for them is going to be a, a very positive experience for them as well. Uh, Buena Vista College is, uh, has recognized that success is important. And uh, further than that, we have done something about uh, realizing that success is important. Uh, we have de developed a program entitled uh, The Second Curriculum. And I guess I like to refer to that program as a, a success development program uh, more than I do that second curriculum program. Uh, I call it a success development program because it's, uh, it goes beyond the classroom. It goes beyond the studying that our students do, do here at the college. Uh, we have a goal here at the college, and I, th and I believe it should be a goal of uh, any quality, comprehensive, college should be to help students, help students become as successful as they possibly can be. Uh, the college, Buena Vista College, uh, attempts to do that. Uh, we try to provide as many resources and programs uh, both within the major and within the classroom as possible, but more importantly we spend a lot of effort and time trying to organize programs outside of the classroom in order to help your son or daughter to be successful. Now, we can't force students to be successful, but we can encourage students and work with them as well as we possibly can uh, 
to show them these programs, to tell them about these programs, and encourage them to be involved in these programs. And, it's, and instead of uh, just talking about all the different experiences that our students have, the different opportunities they have, I thought that I'd invite uh, today a couple of our student leaders to share with you uh, a little bit uh, about their involvement in the second curriculum program and a little bit about how they have uh, utilized some of these out of classroom activities and programs to help themselves to be successful. Uh, the two, two students we have with us today, uh, first of all, uh, is Amy Dittman. Amy is a, uh, a sophomore from uh, Marcus, Iowa. She started out as a, a management infor information systems uh, uh, major and since coming to Buena Vista she has switched her major and she is now a music education major. Uh, in high school Amy was very very involved. She was a four sp sport athlete, uh, very involved in music and drama. Uh, about anything that the high school had to offer Amy got involved with it. Well, since coming to Buena Vista College uh, she first of all is a very good student. Uh, she is a ZZ White scholarship winner uh, and in addition to doing a good job in the classroom Amy is involved in uh, music here at the college and is also involved in volleyball and, and basketball uh, in, the, in the varsity athletic programs here at the college. The second student that we have with us today is uh, Dan Mart and Dan is a uh, junior uh, from Terrell, Iowa uh, Dan started out as an accounting major and has since switched to uh, a business education. Uh, and that's his current major and he plans on teaching once uh, he graduates from college as well. Dan, when he was in high school, majored in, or not majored in, but uh, was very involved in music. Being involved in the second curriculum here at Buena Vista College has really helped me in many ways. Um, to start off with, one of the biggest things it has helped me with is that is in budgeting time. It, um, I see a lot of people around here who aren't involved and they waste a lot of time not doing anything, you know, just, just going around and going about their things about the day. But I guess being involved, I, I learned when to study, I learned when to practice, and I learned when to have fun. Another thing that it helps me with is being a leader. I take time, I know how to make decisions quick decisions and I know how to set short-term and long-term goals. Also being a leader you have to uh, work with people, a lot of people, so your communication skills really develop well, things that uh, you're going to use later on in life. Also you have to delegate work to people, being a leader of an organization on campus or even being involved in, in some organization you have to do some work of your own and work with others. Most of it being involved in anything you have to work with a lot of people. So that is a big key to being a leader. When, and time management is probably, I can't emphasize that enough, is really something that uh, will develop. If you don't have it when you graduate from school, it will develop quickly. And that's not something that has to be worried about. You have to know when to study and when you can have fun. Um, I, there is more to college than studying, of course, but still the, that has to be done. You're paying good money to go to, uh, go to classes here. Yeah. Being involved, too, it, it gives you a chance to, to meet a, a variety of people, students as well as faculty. Um, being in athletics and music, I do meet a variety of people that way. And so when I go out and I do different activities, then I can associate with these people um, in the activities as well as, as when I'm studying. Getting to know people makes you feel like college is home too. If you don't know very many people, you won't enjoy it here as much. Right. The more friends you have, the more at home you feel. And we want the, and we want college to be your home because right. you, you'll spend the next four mm -hmm. four years here, or your students, your children will, I should say. Yeah. And in making that, uh, your child is going to have to make a transitional um, adjustment from high school to college. Now, I was very involved when I was in high school. Uh, I was a four-sport athlete. Uh, music, drama, speech, whatever activity I had time for, I was in it. And in college, I, I have, I've had to cut down a little bit. I had to uh, readjust my values, um, figure out which was more important. But I still, you know, I try to find as much time, you know, that I can to be in as much as that I can be. 
and I can't re-emphasize enough how important it is to be involved. And I don't know about you, Dan, but... I was the same way in high school. I was involved as much as, as Amy was. Um, I would, I'd like to be involved more now, but I, I don't have the time. Between work-study classes and studying, uh, plus my organizations I belong to, it takes up most of my day. So, you'll, you'll be involved as much as you can. Uh, the more, your freshman, the freshman year is kind of a, a slower time because you can't involve too much. Mm -hmm. Classes become important, but after that you can get involved in quite a bit more. And you have to keep in mind too that this is all going to carry on, you know, after college. Um, being involved, I've learned, like I've said before, I've learned three important things. I've learned to make quick, accurate decisions. I've learned how to set goals, both short term and long term. And you learn how to be successful. Um, and through all these things that you learn, you learn to be self-confident. And without self-confidence, you aren't going to go anywhere in life. And I'm sure Dan feels the same way about that. Yeah, and I, after I graduate, since I will be a teacher, I feel that all these aspects are going to help me become mm -hmm. when I'm a teacher, especially the, the communication, mm -hmm. dealing with different people. Right. I deal with so many different people each day, and that will help me in the classroom mm -hmm. situation, so I'm not prejudiced towards one person or another. I can teach to all, all of my students, right. not just one. And I'm not, you know, I'm not saying anything that, that grades aren't important. Grades are very important. And, but also you have to, to remember that when you do go out and get a job, you have, the person who is hiring you is not also going to look at what grades that you have, but at your involvement in your school. Because that way, through your involvement, you're going to be able to communicate with other people and have great leadership ability. And there's a happy medium there. Right. And I think most employers realize that too. Right. So I want to impress upon you to, for you to impress upon your children that getting involved is very important and if your child does get involved through school he's going to relive some of the greatest times in his life and he will always cherish mm -hmm. his college days. Never never forget some right. experiences through organizations right. and friends will last forever because That's right. you've worked so close with them in these organizations you'll never forget them. No. Amy and Dan are uh, just excellent examples of student leadership and the Student Leadership Center and what second, our second curriculum program here at Buena Vista College is all about. Uh, they are good students, uh, they are very involved, and I think above all they have a very good understanding of how being involved will help them to be successful uh, while they're here and once they graduate from the college. Making sure your son or daughter are on the, on the right road to success is, is uh, in part uh, tied to selecting the best college that you can possibly select. And by best, I'm talking about a good fit, something that's going to be good for your son and daughter uh, as well as for the institution. And that process is a lot like putting together a puzzle. Uh, first of all, you have to make sure all the pieces of that puzzle are there. And then, if they're there, you start sorting those pieces out and start putting those pieces together. Uh, and some of those things that I would encourage you to consider or reconsider as a part of that process would be does the college that your son or daughter is looking for, does it have a strong academic program? Does it have an excellent faculty? Does it have a good advising program? Do they have people in the career planning and placement program that are going to help your son or daughter to find that uh, uh, right niche for them. Does the college that you're looking for for your son or daughter have uh, outstanding facilities and state-of-the-art technology in, in whatever major that they may be considering? If you have looked at this as a process and if you're looking at this as a, a, a puzzle and trying to make sure that you're picking out the, helping your son or daughter pick out the right institution, I encourage you as parents right now to stay involved, uh, to ask some tough questions to help your son or daughter make that right choice for them. Good luck.